We'll go through them quickly. Love versus attachment. Oh, love versus attachment and the eight forms of love. So when I say love doesn't exist, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean I can't love my mother, can't love my kids and all of that. I'm talking about romantic love because there are eight different versions of love. All right. So the romantic love is fairy tale. All right. This says right here, the eight types of love and how to tap into each happiness, right? Each of four happiness. All right. I don't believe in all of this, but we'll just go over it. Eros. 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 Erotic. All right. Romantic love. This is more resembling from the Greek, uh, Greek um, mythology and whatnot. So this comes from Greek, European culture of love. All right. If you don't want to listen to it, who gives a shit? Eros is the first kind of love named after the Greek god of fertility. And in real life, this translates to romance, passion, desire, attraction. Okay, this is Eros. Sometimes in America, we only talk about Eros. We lump everything in, into love. And if I say one form of love doesn't exist, you say, well, you don't love your mother? I don't love my mother erotically. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, so let's just separate what love is. I don't have any infatuation with my mother or children. Okay, if I say I love my kids, doesn't mean I have Eros for them. This is what we do in America. And this is what this second grade, third grade conversations are about when it comes to this goofy ass love when I try to dispel the myth. In fact, infatuation, the definition of infatuation is what most women have. Take a look at the definition of infatuation, an intense but short-lived passion or admiration for someone or something. In fact, I'm willing to say most American women or modern women do not love, they are infatuated at best. Mm. And then when the reality hits, then they fall out of infatuation because infatuation is short lived. And then you're stuck with the rest because you make lifelong decisions. You're stuck with the marriage. You're stuck with the lease. You're stuck with the kids because people are in infatuation. They're not in love. They're infatuated with you for a period of time. You move in, you spend more time. They infatuation goes. All right. So you're barely in Eros, Eros. You're more in infatuation, getting back to the eight forms of love. Philia, not metaphilia, all right? But philia is the affectionate love, all right? And so this is what time sometimes the Eros loves just turns into philia. Philia is the love that develops over a deep, long-lasting friendship. It's platonic, respectful, and you care deeply about the friend knowing that you can confide in them and trust them to the ends of the earth. I'll just stop right there. Most relationships turn from eros or infatuation to philia. Marriages that are sexless, marriage that has low sex, but you still care deeply. Uh, uh, marriage based on loyalty. Uh, she had my kids and she went through some shit with me and then I got my shit on track and we love each other. That doesn't mean they're erotic. That doesn't mean they're sexual. It could be they're completely platonic. You can also have a platonic a muse that you never touch, and you have that to stimulate you as a man. Older men used to take a young woman as a muse, meaning that they might not have even touched the woman, but that woman was a source of inspiration. It was deep, long-lasting friendship. I'm not encouraging it, but it happened. Okay? Storage. Familial love, familiar love, which is the parent-child love that indicates a strong bond, kinship, and familiarity. So this type of love can exist. It naturally exists. It should. Doesn't mean I believe in love in the definition of American love, romance. So when I say love doesn't exist, I'm talking about the romantic love. It doesn't exist. It doesn't last. It doesn't persist. It sometimes people use it to manipulate. Sometimes people are pure symbiotes or parasites using love when they just have an attachment. We're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. Ludus, which is playful love, flirting, lightheart, lighthearted teasing in the early stages of a relationship before all the seriousness starts. So let's go back. I call that more infatuation. Okay, so you're infatuated, you're playful, you're touching each other, you're wrestling, and <laughs> tickling each other, tickling her feet, 
before I start sucking the toes, right? Now, that's all good and dandy. Now, when we get into the commitment, then I change up the love. The love changes. Why? Because this is serious business. Now it's business. Now we're attached to the lease, the mortgage. We are paying bills. We can't be all giggly and playfully and flirty. And we can't be all in our uh, kid mode when there's bills to pay. There's bills to pay now. So now we got to treat this like a business. Now we got kids on the way. All the love, the Eros is going to be gone. All the Ludus, the playful love is going to disappear. It's going to disappear more likely than not. You're going to be more in a serious relationship, committed relationship. And she's going to be start saying, mm, can you help me pay my rent? Now it's business. How are you going to be flirty when every time she shows up, she's uncomfortable about her financial situation and you know it's coming. Can we talk turkey? Now let's talk turkey. Oh, shit. Talking turkey means I got to pay. So now it's not less playful. And then when it's more transactional, people start feeling a certain way. Now he's going to feel like it's transactional. Now you're now I'm here to have a benefit. It says right here, the key, the key here is having fun, being flirty, and feeling giddy. Something, uh, sometimes even no strings attached. All right, continuing. Pragma, which is enduring love. Love built on commitment. Du duty. You guys see this right here. Love built on commitment, duty, understanding, and has mature and developed over time. So we had the previous one, which is short-lived, early stages, but now we have pragma. Remember, I say, I'm a pragmatic. I'm a pragmatist. I want it to make sense, and I'm going to get into it, and I want to know what the shit is up front and the reality of it. We're no longer in Eros. We're no longer in Ludus. We're no longer in infatuation. What is it now? Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's iron this shit out. Because now we need to develop this long-term. This doesn't exist with modern women. Stop correcting my damn muse. It's muse. Ninja's out here trying to play smart. Ninja, okay, good. You know how to pronounce it. I pronounce it the way I pronounce it, Ninja. All right. Just keep up with the show, you goofy. All right, good Lord. All right, I'm giving you 30,000 words and you stuck on muse. It's muse. Sit your punk ass down. All right, you got it? Ninja super chatted next time. You want it to be moose? Go ahead. It's moose. I'm giving you 30,000 words. You stuck on one. Sit your punk ass down. You heard me. <laughs> All right? Super chat that shit. You guys are super immature doing that shit. Super chat your corrections next time. Or shut up. Next. Let's keep it, let's keep it moving. Interrupting my class with that bullshit. It's super chat or shut up. <laughs> all right next mania 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 what is mania obsessive love this is where most women have their love it has to be obsessive many men have this obsession love where infatuation turns to i own you obsessive love now they have to obsess over you if he's not obsessing over me it doesn't count i'm obsessing over him because it says right here this refers to an obsessive obsessive love style where there's an imbalance between both parties between ludus and eteros this is when a woman says i get to do things negative to you because of sex let me give you an example let me give you an example you're with the wife you cheat on your wife, which I don't advise. You cheat on your wife. She says, that's not part of the commitment contract, which is not. Then she says, I'm going to hurt you because I'm going to hurt your relationship with your kids because you treated me like this. That's an, that's an obsessive person. She didn't get her benefit from the ludus, the playful love, or the eateros, so she's going to penalize you with obsessive behavior and imbalance because of how you treated sex. People that talk about love don't distinguish this, and they say, well, you she loves you. You love her. Something happened. Why didn't you love her? You should have, well, what are we talking about here? This person's crazy. This person's obsessive. This person's uh, imbalanced. This person's using Ludus and Eteros to now be obsessive and complete, compulsive, parasite. They're, they're destructive 
This is the bull in a china shop. This is the collateral damage. This is the I'm going to pour boiling hot water on you because you want a divorce. This type of sub, this type of love, people use mania as a sign that I love you. And that's not true. This is pure, unadulterated, parasitic behavior. This is attachment. This has nothing to do with love. It is a form of love, but it is a manic love. Right? This is the love where the person stays with the person the entire time and punish them by their presence. Death by a thousand cuts. All right? The manic love, uh, another example of this mania would be um, the woman who comes in and as a result of her her self-esteem, her lack of trust, her issues, her trauma, guess what she does? She makes you do this. This is mania, okay? And we accept it. This is, this is crazy behavior. So when you say this woman's crazy in love, that's mania, all right? And you're treating your person uh, like an inanimate object or somebody that's supposed to be in a position, you don't please me, you don't do this, and I don't do, this is mania. You didn't check in, you didn't answer my text, you left me on red. This is mania, this is not love. Most women are able to pull this off re relative ease because they confuse this with actual love. This has nothing to do with love. This doesn't distinguish what the definition of love should be. All right, so next, last one, I believe, no, two more, agape, which is a universal love, and it's a selfless, unconditional, bigger than yourself love typically characterized i would say by religion religion could have this agape love and it says right here it doesn't require a biological bond or a romantic relationship and this idea date back dates back to the middle middle ages and it's an unselfish concern for the wel welfare of others an unselfish concern about the welfare of others let me tell you not many people have that type of love. Even if you claim to have it, you do not. <laughs> okay, because it has to be selfish, selfless, and unconditional. That means if a woman says, just simply, I don't cook or I don't clean, she ain't capable of love mm. at all. Now, that could change if she meets the right person, and it could change temporarily, but that's a condition. Remember, it's supposed to be unconditional. So if she's doing acts of service, but there's conditions to it, that's mania. That, that has nothing to do with agape. She's incapable of love because she's basically saying, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z. All right. So, um, and it, this could be for men too. This could be for men too. But this is, this is what we're talking about why modern women can never love a man. They, they never can reach these things. Even when she says, I did so much for him. Yeah, dogs have agape. Dogs dogs have agape. Like, unfortunately, dogs put up with a lot of shit from their owners. But because the dog has a need, they say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Dogs love you no matter what. Like, you could comp completely put the dog off, not pay attention to the dog. The dog can still be pining for your attention. Then you show up 20 minutes later, and the dogs... <laughs> the dog done forgot about that. The dog's moved on. The dog's like, okay, there you are again. <laughs> right? Um, this type of love is very rare, rarely found. Let's go to the last one, and it's going to be self-love. And this is why modern women can never love men, because listen to this one. And I can't pronounce this, because if I do, you ninjas will be in my chat. On the one word you know how to pronounce, but you don't know how to pronounce this, go ahead and pronounce this shit out. Sound this shit out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Self-love, self-love. The Greeks understood early on that in order to care for others and love others, uh-oh, you must first be able to direct these emotions inward. That's where it fails right there. See that? <laughs> hey, I'm going to read it again for you. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read this again. This is why the self-love movement for men, self, uh, self-improvement, free agent lifestyle, all of this shit. I'm like, you need to fall in love with yourself. And then matter of fact, you need to have so much love for yourself because other, depending on other people to love you is going to be great disappointment. 
this self-love, it says, the Greeks understood early on that in order to care for and love others, you must first be able to direct these emotions inward. It might seem obvious, but the relationships we have with others is one, is the one will be in the longest and an ideal practice for people who want to improve relationships with others and most importantly with themselves in this short mediation video that they describe right here. It requires the love of themselves. Because if they say, you complete me, if they say, well, I have depression, stress, anxiety, if they say they're faulted, if they say you gave me depression, if they say you lower my self-esteem, if they say you're controlling me, if they say this, they can't even love themselves. How in the hell are they supposed to love you? Mm. How? They can't do it. This is in general. Some can, some think they can, but they cannot. If they say they're fractured and you're there to complete them, but then you fail to and they blame you on the way out for their position when you left the relationship and they say they were fractured and broken and and they were depressed and didn't have love and didn't know how to love themselves, they came in with an inability to love. Mm. They came into it with that and they left with the same position they came in with. They can't love. When I say they can't love, I don't mean they can't love you or give you and show you love. I'm telling you they can't love you. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Now, they think they can, but they cannot. They must correct these things first and understand these things first before they even come my direction with the commitment, relationship, monogamy, finance. They have to complete all of these circles. Men, for you, you have to put these boundaries up and make them commit to these things first before. Trust me, I made the mistake of doing the opposite and it costs me dearly. I'm not the only one. It's cost a lot of men. When they say men are hurt, it's because they found out the woman was incapable of loving them. They were just attached to them. And their love was conditional. And thus, if you left them, they either came manic, became manic, or said that, you failed in completing them when in fact they couldn't even complete themselves.